Hello Studenten! I'm Laura Bennett with German with Laura and in this video we will address the question is the instant immersion method the best way to learn German? This video is part of a larger series, Learning the German Language, The Essential Beginner's Guide, but this video does also stand on its own. So, so many students think that the best, fastest way to learn German would be to go to Germany and instantly hear only German and read only German and speak only German, or if you can't actually travel right away, to duplicate this at home, take an instant immersion course or class where all of the explanations even are in German and you're listening to German music and you're watching German shows and you're reading German books. German, German, German. Does this really work? I want you to think about a child learning how to swim. Can we throw that child into the 10 foot and say, hey, learn how to swim. You can do it. Sure, we could. And maybe that poor child will flutter and sputter and flail around enough that they can keep their head above water, they can survive barely by the skin of their teeth, but what would be the better way to actually learn how to swim? You have to start off in the kiddie pool. You have to take some lessons. You have to learn some techniques. You have to have someone who shows you how to swim. And then you will be prepared to go out into the deep end and succeed at swimming instead of potentially drowning. I've known people who have gone to Germany not speaking a lick of German, and they didn't come out of it fluent in German. No, instead they ended that experience feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, and knowing a handful of broken German phrases. So what does it look like to start off in the kiddie pool and learn the essentials that then set us up for success here in the deep end? We have to hit three benchmarks. We need to learn the right thing at the right time and in the right way. There's this fancy phrase in the linguistics world that when you're learning German or any other language, you need to be focused on comprehensible input plus one. But what this means is that the majority of the German that you're hearing or reading needs to be understandable to you and you should be stretched just a little bit so that you're constantly improving. But if it's comprehensible input plus 10 or comprehensible input plus 100, that's too much. You're going to be flooded with all sorts of information that you don't have the tools to digest. When you first start off learning German in the kiddie pool, there are specific vocabulary words and specific grammar structures that you need to focus on first. You have to build the right foundation. This would include, for example, about 2,000 words of basic vocabulary. We'll look at the details in a second. Then, as far as grammar is concerned, you need to have a foundational understanding of the nominative, accusative, and dative cases. Again, examples coming soon. You need to learn the three most common verb tenses that you will use the most, and you also need to learn what is called the subjunctive mood. When it comes to the 2,000 word basic vocabulary, I want you to think of a pyramid. The foundation of it is going to be a bunch of basic noun categories such as clothing, foods, furniture, professions, places, etc. After that, we have a bunch of verbs that we need to work on. About 50 common verbs and you need to think in terms of learning the verb to eat but saving verbs such as to nibble, to snack, to munch, etc. for down the road. Okay, but then you also need to learn what are called modal verbs and verbs with separable prefixes. Then after that, we need to add in a few dozen basic adjectives and then a handful of other types of words, adverbs and prepositions. 
in order to become proficient or even fluent in German, you have to, from the very beginning, start understanding the German system for indicating who's the subject of the sentence, who's the direct object of the sentence, who's the indirect object of the sentence. For example, to say, der Mann backt, the man bakes. He's the subject of the sentence. That means he's in the nominative case. In this next example, he's still the subject, still in the nominative case, but now we're talking about what he's baking. And that what, a cake, is the direct object, which in German goes into the accusative case. In this third example, der Mann backt seine Frau einen Kuchen, our man is still the subject, still in the nominative case. The cake is still what he's baking, so it's still in the accusative case. And the person for whom the cake is being baked, his wife, is in the dative case because she's the indirect object in this sentence. And I know that this is super overwhelming, okay? I have a free mini course called Unlocking German Grammar. You can click on the link down below, open that up in a new tab and register for that course today so that you can start better understanding what on earth I was just talking about here. But for in this video, suffice it to say, you need to learn this stuff. Okay, so we need to work on a basic vocabulary of 2,000 words. We need to learn the nominative, accusative, and dative cases. We also need to learn the three most basic verb tenses that you're going to use the most. The first is the present tense, as in der Mann backt, the man bakes. Second is the past tense, der Mann backte, the man baked. Third is another past tense that German uses even more often, der Mann hat gebacken, which is essentially another way of saying the man baked. The fourth and final element of kiddie pool German that you need to build first is working on what is called the subjunctive mood. And that would mean, for example, knowing how to say der Mann würde backen, the man would bake if dot dot dot, or der Mann hätte gebacken, wenn, the man would have baked if, or saying der Mann wäre Bäcker, wenn, the man would be a baker if. Once you build up these basic techniques, in the kiddie pool, then you are ready to head out into the deep end and experience full immersion of taking in the German left and right, speaking only in German, asking questions when you don't understand something, building vocabulary like a madman every day. You're ready for that when you have the foundation first. Instant immersion is a recipe for drowning but full immersion, right, the right thing at the right time done in the right way because you have the kiddie pool foundation is fantastic. But be sure to follow my advice of the vocabulary and those specific grammar points in the kiddie pool so you can be set up for success in the deep end. All the misinformation on the instant immersion method ties hand in hand with another prevalent belief, which is if you want to speak German, the best way to get started is to simply start speaking German. Does this really work? We're going to look at that in the next video. So you can click here to continue to the next video in this series, or if you haven't yet watched from the beginning, click here instead. We're going to talk about YouTube videos, popular apps, and software programs, and the pitfalls of them that I see so many students fall into. You need to avoid those pitfalls so that you can actually achieve your goal of learning to speak German.